Hello there, friends. I'm Mike Marshall from the Artist Works Mandolin School. And good to see you all. And we're just having a ball over here at our little mandolin community where we have literally hundreds of mandolinists all sending me videos and I'm personally responding to all of them and trying to help folks out with their mandolin picking. So um, I'm going to give you a couple of, um, of little exercises, things to think about at, um, at three levels of mandolin playing. We'll start with the beginner level, assuming you just recently have started playing and you're just getting into this and you want some fundamentals about technique. And a big one for me is posture. A big one for me when, when people first pick up the instrument is just getting it in their hands, getting them seated so that they feel comfortable and that both hands are really free to do the action. And so uh, those of you who are signed up to my site know that I emphasize this quite a lot. Even with intermediate and advanced players, it usually comes up. There's usually some issue with posture that I'm hoping that I can help them play more freely um, just by simply moving uh, their arms or hands or legs uh, in a certain way uh, that frees up both hands to do what they're doing more, more uh, effectively and efficiently. So a uh, big one for me is getting seated. I think that we all play a lot better when we're seated, uh, even though many bluegrass bands, of course, you stand up when you play, but we get to that later in the curriculum. Uh, for seated posture, I recommend that you use a footstool and you get the mandolin really situated between your legs so that it's really being held nicely uh, and that you're using the, left, the right arm to hold the mandolin in place to a certain degree, but it's also your chest your left leg and your right leg. You have now four points of contact. And the idea here being that the left hand is then free to, uh, to fret the fingerboard. And, and there's no tension in the right hand or, or even in the arm trying to hold the mandolin up. Um, that the, both hands are very loose. That's a big one for me. It's just keeping the, the pick grip really loose, keeping the right hand so that the fingers are curled slightly and not anchoring on the fingerboard. Uh, instead, just, you know, a nice relaxed curl to the, the fingers that are, that, are holding, that are not holding the pick. The index finger is curled slightly and the pick goes on there, uh, just like that, and it comes to the instrument. And the, the main thing is that the pick isn't gripped too hard. You're not really bearing down on your grip because that's going to create tension in the thumb, which is going to manifest itself in the wrist and in the arm. A very la relaxed, loose grip on the pick is really fundamental. Uh, and then I have a series of really simple exercises I do using just open strings, just playing down strokes and up strokes on alternating strings, starting with the G string and then playing the D string. Something as simple as that, playing the G string and then the A string. You know, as easy as it, as it looks, it's amazing how difficult that is for some people and, and for beginners, especially just to coordinate the pick, you know, really playing through both of the pairs of strings, not accidentally just plucking one, but playing through both pairs and getting a nice full sound. And again, a relaxed feeling in the pick so that there's a give in the pick. There should be a little bit of a, a flop almost. Uh, never that it's that it's hard and attacking and and there's tension in there That's going to actually make it more difficult to go through the string with a relaxed grip on the pick you get um, a Kind of almost a shock absorber effect where the pick has a little give as it passes into the string and And it has a tendency to go through the string easier with that little bit of of no resistance You know it just it floats right into the string and flops through the string. And then we do G and E. And we alternate these with, with all the different pairs. I've got a whole series of them on my site that you can explore. We use the D string as the pivot note and we play the A string. We use the D string as the pivot note and we play the E string. And then we use the D as the pivot and we play the G. All of these exercises are starting with a downstroke and then playing it up. Probably the hardest thing for people is to, is to get the upstroke to really speak as well as the downstroke. And that's, a, that's another exercise I like to do. 
where I'll do something simple like this. And the focus of it will be to get the, the first fretted note on that second fret to really speak as well as the open string. The open string is the down, the F sharp or second fret is the, is the upstroke, and the G sharp note there on the fourth fret is the downstroke. So a simple three note phrase like this, it's very important that the second note and the middle note of that little passage is always speaking as well as the other notes. Oftentimes what you'll hear is this. Hear how that middle note is a little bit lighter, almost ghosted? Bringing that middle note out is going to do wonders for all of your tunes, believe it or not. As simple as idea as that is, that's going to transform your playing. Just to create a feeling of the upstroke, that index finger coming up under the pick, giving a little bit of pressure. I even ask people sometimes to practice making that upstroke stronger than the downstroke. And boy, that does wonders for their playing. Just by taking that, that middle note and really making it speak clearly uh, can really enhance all the tunes you're playing already. So those are some things about single string playing. Then if we go into chords, just really basic chords like this, open G chord, open C chord, and what I call the open D. And we start playing a tune, let's say, something like, you know, take this hammer, care to the captain, Take this hammer, care to the captain. Take this hammer, care to the captain. Tell him I'm gone. Tell him I'm gone. All right. The main thing I like to tell folks is. Once you get this strumming pattern down, which is down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. That's the basic pattern for the right hand. The uh, challenge is to get the chord, the new chord placed so that it's nice and clear at the moment where the change happens. And that's often a challenge for people. You'll, you'll see people say, carrot to the captain. And there's this moment of setting the fingers to get it to get it ready to play that next chord. Well, what I tell folks is to give up a little bit of the back part of the previous chord and try and put all your emphasis on landing that, that new chord right on the downbeat, having the fingers in place so that, it, so that it sounds clearly from the beginning of that chord. So if you're doing it along and you gotta go to a D chord, notice how I kind of gave up a little. Two, three, four hit that one right strong with those fingers already in place, man, that's going to make all the difference in the world because it's going to be like you made the chord as opposed to you were still getting yourself set during the period of, of, uh, of the first part of that, that bar. So those are some simple little beginner tips. Hope you guys are enjoying it. We're having a ball over here. I encourage you to, uh, to tell your friends about our little mandolin school here get personalized instruction from me every video that's sent to me gets a gets a personal response uh, with simple little uh, advice advices that uh, hopefully will help improve your mandolin playing all right hope to see you out there uh, sometime soon and uh, I will go now to our any intermediate level uh, uh, players <laughs>